my craft is breeding honeybees. And if you're going to do a craft, no matter what that craft is, you have to understand the material and, um, and, and the media. So we're going to talk about honeybee genetics today. It's a little bit different than the rest of the talks. Really different than the genetics that we, that we learned in high school. What we learned is girl bunny and a boy bunny. The girl bunny produces an egg with half of her genes, and a boy bunny produces a sperm with half of his genes. Presumably, they love each other very, very much. And eventually, the girl bunny and the boy bunny, they share a special hug. <laughs> and they produce a baby bunny that's half of the genes of the girl bunny and half of the genes of the boy bunny. Right? We remember that from high school. But bees are a little bit different. So let's, let's talk about bees for a second. First of all, there's three casts of honeybees, unlike the girl bunny and the boy bunny. In the purple, you can see the queen. Circled to the green is a drone. And everything else there is a worker. You can see there's some larvae and some eggs. And you can even see that worker with her... Um, active end uh, forward, so to, sp so to speak. You can see the little stinger there. So workers, those are the worker bees, they make up about 80% of the colony of the bees. They do all of the actual work in the colony, except for laying eggs and mating with queens. Workers generally don't lay eggs, but we'll talk about that in a second. And workers are nutritionally stunted queens. They have a different diet. Now, drones are produced from unfertilized eggs, like a chicken egg that you'd buy in the store. That's how dr where drones come from. When drones mate, their penis explodes and they die, which is very sad for the drone. And all of the sperm in a given drone is identical, and this is important. Now, the queens, remember, they're genetically identical to the workers, that could, because they're, but they're fed a more, a more protein-rich diet, so they develop sexually. And a queen will mate with 8 to 30 drones in the first few weeks of her life, up in the air, where you can't see it, and she stores and nourishes that sperm for up to five years. So when queens mate, you get a different thing. The queen produces an unfertilized egg, if that egg were fertilized, it would produce a worker or a queen, but because it isn't fertilized, it produces a drone. And that drone produces sperm. Now we have something a little bit more conventional on the other side. The queen produces an egg with half of her genetics, and the sperm and the egg come together in a fatal exploding penis instead of a special hug. And we get our, our new queen with half of the genetics of the two queens. This is two queens are, mate, are actually mating. The drone is acting essentially as a flying sperm. Now in the next generation, if that queen lays a drone even after she's mated, it has nothing to do with the drone that she lays, but, but a, a queen or a worker that, that, she, that she lays has, half, has all of the genes from the drone that's involved and half of the genes from the queen. Now this generation of drone is a reflection of the previous generation's success and not a new experimental combination. This is a subset of the mother queen's genes, not a product of the mating of, of the just previous generation. Now, when a queen produces drones, each drone has half of her genes, but each drone is a different half of her genes. But with each of those drones, all of the sperm that that drone produces are identical. And in fact, they're identical to the genetics of that drone itself. Now, when drones mate with a queen, you, know, you, see you, can, you have different drones mating with a queen. When the queen lays drones, the drone, their mating has nothing to do with it. It's just the queen. But workers and queens are half of the queen and half from the drones she's mated with, depending on which sperm is used. But remember that each egg is a different half of the queen's ge genes, just like, just like re regular genetics. You know, they're, they're, it's not, not every egg is the same. It's not split in two, split into many halves. Um, so each egg is different. But each drone sperm is, is exactly the same if it comes from a single drone. So we're talking about a limited set of sperm, 8 to 30 different sperm, and then an, kind of an infinite variation of genetics from the queen, but all within the, the confines of her genetics. Now, if a colony is queen right, which is everything is functioning properly, the queen lays drones that are only the product of her genes. But workers and queens also, we talked about this before, um, are a combination of the, of the queen and the genes of the drones that she's mated with. Now, if the hive is hopelessly queenless and they can't raise a new queen, because the smell of the queen isn't there, those workers will start to lay eggs. But the workers never mated, so they can only lay drones. They can only... They can, only make, they can only lay unfertilized eggs. So, so what this means is that there's a variety of genetic traits in the colony for the colony to draw upon, more than any two sets of genes could provide. Remember, you have 100,000 bees in a colony sometimes. And these traits are, are propagated, but they don't quickly crowd out some of the less used traits. They stick around for a while. Now, Mendel did try to breed bees after he figured out peas, but he didn't understand the haploid genetics that we're talking about. And the multiple matings of the queen wasn't really a church-friendly concept at the time. <laughs> It isn't clear that, that he even could talk about that. So um, maybe, maybe if you invite me back sometime, I'll talk about how we apply this, the, this knowledge of the materials into actually um, the craft of breeding bees. Thank you.